Assalamu alaikum. So, uh, my name is uh, Abdurrahim Bello, uh, as uh, Sheikh Sulaiman mentioned. Just uh, a brief disclaimer off the top is uh, I am not an astronaut yet. Is uh, You become an astronaut when you go into space, which uh, it's, it's about, um, about 61 miles from the surface of the Earth, right? So, uh, once you cross that line, if anybody can go across that line, you're considered an astronaut. But inshallah, my goal is to someday become an astronaut. And uh, I would also like to thank the organizers uh, for inviting me here to be able to share my uh, story with, with all of you and, and with some of uh, the youth here. Um, um, hopefully, inshallah, that it will be able to be, you know, some of, my, uh, some of the things I've learned along my journey will be beneficial to everybody that's here. Um, and so today I, I, uh, I, I got the opportunity to read uh, some of the some of the topics that have been uh, been uh, discussed in previous uh, some of your youth alaka talking about Muslim identity and uh, and uh, and so I'll I'll, I'll uh, just generally share my story from really where I think uh, I really became spiritually awoken to to pursue this path and how Alhamdulillah has uh, has guided me thus far is uh, I think you know I was, I was uh, a young boy I grew up in Nigeria I was born in Nigeria. At around five years old, is I, I, I dreamt of really, you know, becoming an astronaut. So, but before that, it, um, in Nigeria, you know, we don't have electricity like this. So every evening, you know, you're typically outside, and you know, the star, the night sky is the most beautiful thing you could see. I mean, it's something I miss even now. And so you would basically you would spend the you spend most of your time. At least I did as a young kid. Um, just being able to watch the night sky, and you could see the bright stars, you know, as they as they cross the horizon, and uh, and so you know, so it was time to 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 to, to get a plan to figure out. Okay, I mean, ninth grade, how can we go from, you know, from ninth grade at thirteen years old to twenty one uh, with a PhD in aerospace engineering? So now, mind you, in two thousand six. Um, NASA also basically said that you know they were going to go to Mars 15 years away, right? So there was really no reason for me to try to quote unquote still uh, aim to uh, to keep my part of, of trying to, to graduate early. But as I told myself from much early on, is I would simply focus on doing my part and not necessarily worry about the externalities. You know, I wouldn't worry about NASA's uh, timetable. I would just worry about my own timetable. And so I resolved then in, uh, that in, in, when I was in, uh, in high school, I learned more about the educational system. I realized that in Texas, uh, by going to summer school twice, I could graduate a year early. And so, uh, you know, with, uh, with a lot of support from my parents, um, which I guess to also mention again, you know, since when I was when I was five, when I mentioned, you know, I wanted to become an astronaut and was going to study astronomy, you know, my my mom was also very very supportive of 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 that as well. So I mean, having very supportive parents of my dreams and my aspirations was really important. Since you know, I haven't changed that story since I was five. What I wanted to be is still what I want to be. Um, and then uh, and so I was able to uh, to basically with their support go to summer school twice and then finish high school when I was 15 in Houston, Texas. And, uh, and then from there, I, uh, I, I uh, applied to study astronomy in Texas. I went to uh, UT Austin. And so at UT Austin, uh, the plan was to try to finish my undergraduate degree in two years and then go on to, to, uh, to graduate school and try to finish that, uh, my doctoral degree in four years. Right, so I got there. I after talking with my advisor and looking at the the, edu- the basically the credits that you need to all the classes you need to take to graduate. I realized that because I didn't have any high any college credits already, I couldn't uh, graduate in in two years. So um, I decided to challenge myself. Um, to I decided to then double major in physics and astronomy. Uh, and then complete that degree in three years, which a double major in physics and astronomy typically takes about five years. 
But uh, during those three years, um, I averaged, you know, so I, I would go to school as well in the summers, and uh, I was taking on average about 17 hours. Uh, one of the one of the years I'm particularly proud. And then also, I uh, I I. I, I was also doing research. There was a program at, at UT Austin called the Freshman Research Initiative. So this uh, this attitude of asking questions and wanting to seek answers, research, scientific research, was something that I found as a way to basically, you know, you do experiments, you prose hypotheses about the way the world works, about uh, about how Allah has designed it, and it's for us to 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 do these experiments to try to figure out. And so, with scientific research, was something that I was akin to as as one way to be able to find uh, the truth about some of the nature about the nature of things. And so, I, I was a part of that program as the in the freshman research initiative, as it was called. I, I began in that program as one of the students and then went on to mentor for the two years that followed on. And, uh, and while doing that as well, I was also in school and I was taking on average about uh, 17 hours, which is about uh, six classes every semester. Um, one of the semesters I was particularly proud of is uh, in 2010. So at the beginning of every year, something I always did was uh, – uh, I made uh, a New Year's resolution, right? So I, it's still something I, I, I continue to today where I basically I, I set goals, uh, and now it's a little bit more elaborate. But basically I, I'm always making sure I'm setting goals for the year. It doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to uh, – that I've always accomplished all of those goals. And sometimes I've actually gone beyond those goals. Because, uh, but uh, making sure I'm setting goals and, uh, and, and then trying to follow up on them because – uh, one of the phrases I, I like is you can only improve what you measure. So whatever it is that you're, you're trying to get back, uh, you're trying to get good at, it's important that you have a system for measuring it until so you can improve at that. Um, and so in 2000, yeah, the year 2000, one of my New Year's resolution, basically, one of the things I had to do based on this plan that had me graduating with two degrees in three years was that I had to uh, complete 60 hours, 60 college credit hours, which was about 20 classes within the school calendar year. And that also required me taking about nine classes during one summer. And so, but by this time, I was very well, uh, I, I knew what I was doing in college. Um, and so, alhamdulillah, you know, that year I actually had to take 63 hours when I was going through the, the requirements. I was revising my plan. So, at the beginning of every semester, I typically spent about six hours uh, the first before the day before school resumed, about six hours just uh, going through my plans and, and 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 making sure that you know none of my courses would clash and so on. So, for some of you that are about to go into college, those are some of the things. But I never allowed, uh, I guess, my course planning since this was something I had built on from from high school. I never left it to my college advisors. And, um, uh, and, and, and part of the reason why, and, 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 uh, and I'm glad I didn't because uh, when you live, you know, when you go to college and you, and you simply just say, oh, my college advisor is going to take care of it for me, um, I can, uh, I can from, from the experience of some of my other colleagues without mentioning names, is, uh, is there are some people in, in my community which I offered to help, to help, you know, create a, a similar academic plan, who uh, were particularly close to me but decided not to listen. And so that caused them to basically graduate a, a year later than, than, than what they had planned. Because, But a lot of this information is out there. So the saying that, you know, failing to plan is planning to fail is true. And uh, there is a price for ignorance. So it's, it's important for all of us to ask questions about the things that we do not know to make sure that, you know, that we can avoid uh, making these mistakes. And also, it's, uh, even, if, even if, you know, some people can say things that sound very, that sounds very right, and especially from the, from the kutbah we all heard today, is that the truth is independent of belief, which means um, just because some people don't believe in, in God doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Or, for example, a simple way we can all relate to is um, the is the Earth, right? Back in the in the in the early century, 
when people believed that the earth was flat. It didn't change the nature of the earth. The earth was still round, and the earth <laughs> didn't care, right? So just from the, the, the kutba earlier today, right, when talking about hellfire and so on and having to cross hellfire, just because you don't believe it doesn't mean it's going to change that reality. And if you don't know about it, it also can affect what opportunities you, uh, what opportunities, uh, you can have in life or what you actually believe is also possible for you to accomplish. Um, in, in, in business or in education, in just about any of your pursuits. Um, and so just going back uh, to my story uh, now is, uh, alhamdulillah, in 2011, I was able to finish both degrees uh, uh, in the spring of 2011, and I was 18 then. And, uh, you know, listen to my brother, you know, he mentioned for a lot of people going to college, you know, joining the MSA, is uh, is something that's advised. Interestingly, I actually didn't join the MSA uh, in um, in while I was in, in in college, but I I was I. Uh, but but what is very important, I believe, uh, from reflecting back on that time, is that I was I kept myself busy twenty four seven, right? So almost every single day, if uh, because I was taking quite a, a number of classes. I, when I would get home, I would get home at about six, and then you know pray, and then uh, go to bed. Is uh, if, and then on the weekends, on Friday nights, I had to start my homework that Friday night. Otherwise, I wouldn't finish. You know, at least I wanted to make sure that I could finish uh, before Sunday. And then maybe if I if I had a, a slower weekend, I would go to the to the gym. But the important point is when. A lot of our youths, or when people basically, when you go off to college, uh, making sure that you fill your time constructively is what is most important uh, for, uh, at least I, I think, was something that that was very useful for me in terms of making sure, because I, I mean, I was particularly focused on this goal, but because when you're at home, you know, your non constructive time is monitored, right? When you go to college, the non-constructive time is not being monitored. Um, and so I think uh, making sure that, you know, uh, as, as youth, we, we, we try to make sure that we keep ourselves busy because uh, whether we like it or not, speaking of just the truth in general, is that as human beings, we, and something I'm, I'm learning to appreciate even more, is that we are all slaves whether we like it or not. You have to spend 24 hours a day and the question is, how are you going to spend those 24 hours? You know, whether that's, uh, whether for me it was, you know, working, uh, and, and I found fulfillment in that. Um, and so making sure that, you, you know, you're not, uh, you're not a slave to the TV or, or to the game and so on and so forth is, uh, and, and finding constructive things to find fulfillment in is something I think that has helped me in being able to stay focused on, on my goals. And so, alhamdulillah, I went on to UT Arlington to study aerospace engineering. That was in 2011. I, uh, I learned there as well that because my previous degrees were in the sciences and then now I was moving to engineering, that I would have to take, uh, a, uh, uh, I would have to take some remedial courses and I couldn't just jump straight into the to doctoral program. And so I had to do a master's first. And so instead of the typical two and a half years that it – that it would take uh, to complete a research master's, I decided to to compress that in about two and a half years. And my experience from from doing uh, research as an undergrad really helped uh, prepare me for when I was doing my master's. And I was able to do all of the experiments I needed to do in about two weeks because I had already come in with this attitude of planning. And even before it was time for me to do my experiments, I would come in and I would shadow other people and learn from them and, uh, and, and, and be of help where I could. And then uh, when I began my, after I graduated in 2012, uh, with my master's when I was 20, in 2013, I began my, uh, my doctoral work in aerospace engineering. But also, I wanted to do at this point, I was more confident in what it meant to do research. I wanted the research that I was going to do, the types of questions I would try to answer to be more meaningful and impactful on society uh, because that really is uh, what we're going to get measured by, right? Beyond our solat, the question then becomes, you know, 
how many good deeds do you have? It's going to be the currency of the day. Uh, and so I decided to focus on making a power generator with this uh, with this uh, uh, engine that we that we had been working on this in our lab, which is supposed to be a next generation jet engine. And so later on uh, that year in 2013, uh, some of you here close to the northeast might have heard of the the flare gas, right? In North Dakota, you have the Bakken shale. So where they're flaring gas they, they, with this fracking process. But what happens is, unlike in Texas, where we actually have pipelines to, to ship the gas around, they, uh, in, in, in the north here, in, in North Dakota and other places, there is no existing pipeline, so they basically waste the gas. And so you can actually see these flares from space um, of people just wasting energy. Um, and so we decided that this technology that we were working in the lab could potentially be used to burn these types of fuels that weren't going to work with the existing en- en- energy uh, engines. And so we decided to uh, – I decided to – I talked with my uh, – one of the other things that I've always also been very pragmatic about was um, – is even though I have these, uh, I would say, uh, big dreams, is that I check my externalities with reality – um, in terms of there are things I can't control, but at the same time, uh, I'm still plugged into making sure that uh, that some of the other pieces that are controlled by a lot are, are there in, terms, in order to indicate that I was going on a path that was actually possible. So one of the commitments that I made before starting a company, a startup company, was that if my uh, research advisor was not on board with this idea, that I wouldn't pursue it. And so, look, which is a very rare thing. There are not a lot of professors that also want to, to help you start a company. And so I talked with my research advisor, and he was very supportive. And he actually later came on on board as, as one of our co-founders um, to try to make this technology to be a power generator that could, that could uh, solve this problem of, of wasting, of wasting uh, gas. And so we uh, we continued with that effort, and in the following year, in 2014, we were accepted to to the Rice Business Plan Competition, which is the uh, the largest business plan competition in the world, and that really marked a step in terms of validation that there was uh, interest in the world for something like this. And uh, later on, we would receive uh, we received grant funding from an organization that's now called Venture Well. And they, 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 funded, uh, they funded the startup company. And at the same time as well, I was working on my doctoral work and, uh, and still trying to get through school. And so uh, continued to manage both of them side by side. And last year, we received uh, a grant as well from the National Science Foundation that allowed us to continue to, to try to develop this technology. And also last uh, fall, at the same time, you know, with the support of my advisor, I was able to to begin, you know, uh, to work on my comprehensive document, and also to uh, to then go on to graduate earlier this year uh, 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 with my with my doctoral degree. But uh, one of the uh, and and so now I'm uh, I'm teaching at the at the university. Uh, I'm teaching at the university uh, as an adjunct. Uh, I plan to do that for about a year. Uh, while I'm also working on the startup company, really trying to mature the technology. We're focused on trying to make it into a rocket engine and to sell that to defense uh, uh, contractors. And, uh, and, and that's, my, uh, that's my story so far. Uh, inshallah, I, I, I continue to, to, to basically you know, trust that. You know, and, and I think one of the sayings that I have also comforted myself with when things have often gotten... Tough and, and I've had uh, various challenges. Was I've always been confident that the one that got me this far would get me through, and so that has always been something that I, I often told myself whenever it was time for final exams or, or or things were particularly challenging working on my startup. Was that you know that that that, uh, that uh, I'm actually <laughs> grateful for the amount of success. Uh, that uh, that I've been able to achieve with the with the startup that we didn't that nobody offered us so much money and asked me to go quit school or 
or, or, or the other route where we didn't, you know, we didn't uh, receive absolute no funding and so on. So sometimes, at least I've realized that just simply being patient with a goal. And for me, it's not something that I, that I, that's a whim that I, I started dreaming about yesterday. It's something that I know that so much of my success, I know for a fact, has been because of these externalities, things that I couldn't control, right? My mom creating the opportunity for me to be able to come to the U.S., um, my advisor being supportive to this idea to, st- to start a startup company. Um, all of these things are, are things that basically I'm counting on a lot to make happen. And I think uh, it's something that in- informs me about the nature of what success is, is that we're constantly just being asked to react to certain situations, but we don't actually get to, to – uh, we don't actually get to be uh, – to, to, we, don't, we don't get to choose how things happen. But, uh, but, but by making sure that we're, we're prepared, we're, we're trusting in Allah to, 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 to allow us to enable success. And we do our part. We, we plan and we do our best. And then you, you live the rest of Allah is, uh, is, is something that I, that I continue to, uh, to, to hold dear and to, and to, to practice. Assalamu alaikum.